What's up people, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me. So for today, it's another sequel, part three of my three part series of how I organize my wedding crates. But before I start, if you could do me a huge favor and hit that like button down there, it'll help my algorithm so more people can see this video. There are like three of you that hit the dislike button every single time. I just read that it still helps my algorithm, so ha, you're still helping me. <laughs> Haters. And of course, if you don't subscribe, please consider subscribing. I got a ton of great content on the way. But anyway, today we're gonna talk about my cocktail hour crates. And I totally realized that I'm doing this kind of out of order, like a Martin Scorsese movie or something, right? Like we started at dinner, you know, part two was dancing, and then part three, back at the beginning during cocktail hour, I don't know. So cocktail hour is a super important part of the wedding. If you've ever been to a wedding before, you know how it is, you sit through the ceremony. If you're really close to them, you shed a tear right? It's a nice thing. If you're a wedding DJ like me watching this, you've seen a thousand ceremonies, so it takes a lot to shed a tear. That person better be special. But you, you sit through it, right? You get through it, and then the party starts during cocktail hour. That's when you get to have your first drink of the day. You get to start talking to people. That, that's when the celebration starts. So I think setting the right vibe and the right mood during cocktail hour is super, super important. A couple things I keep in mind when I make my cocktail hour crates is that number one, I don't want to step on the stuff that I want to play later. I do mix in some mainstream songs in my list, but like they're just songs I don't play during the reception. So you just don't want to step on yourself during the reception. So you got to dig a little harder when it comes to cocktail hour and stuff. Another rule that I stuck by when I made my cocktail hour crates is I wanted to keep everything upbeat. I've been to a lot of cocktail hours where I'm personally a guest at a wedding and it's literally just smooth jazz in the background and it puts people to sleep. You want people to have a pep in their step. Same rule if you watch my dinner video I talked about this. I want people to have at least one extra drink than they were planning on having at the wedding especially during cocktail hour. If you got the vibe right, if people are feeling good and moving their shoulders, you know, little two-step, little sing-along, you're having a great time, you might have an extra drink. You didn't plan on it, you were just having so much fun. It happens to all of us, and that's what I want to happen to the wedding guests. So depending on where the wedding is, the venue, and a couple other factors, there's two different locations that a cocktail hour could be in. Either in your ballroom, where the whole wedding's gonna be, or in a separate room. Where I'm from, it's kinda 80-20, right? We kinda do mostly in a separate room, but sometimes in the ballroom, so you gotta be prepared for that. Now when it comes to being in the ballroom, right? I refer to these lists and I mix like normal. Just like I mix through dinner, just like I mix through dancing, I'm mixing through cocktail hour. I'm not stuffing my face with hors d'oeuvres, right? I might steal a pig in a blanket, coconut shrimp, right? As it passes by, if I can catch eyes with them. You guys do that like while you're mixing. You'd be mixing during cocktail hour and the, the, the waitress is coming by and it, oh, oh, you know what I mean? Like try and get the, Anyway, you do want to mix, right? Because mixing, timing, programming, it's super, super important no matter what situation. I don't care that it's cocktail hour. You're going to have a better effect on people mixing it rather than just loading up a playlist and letting that thing play in the background, doing a Spotify list or whatever you happen to do. Now, with that being said, if it's in a separate room, I'm not going to mix live. That's a whole nother setup. That's a whole pain in the ass. Nobody does that. We usually do a remote setup and kind of have something playing on that remote setup, but what I do for the exact same reason I was just talking about is I make a mix ahead of time. What's cool about making a mix is sometimes you can reuse mixes. Like sometimes a mix you made, you know will work great for another couple. So you don't have to make a mix every single wedding. But like I said, for the exact same reason I want to mix dinner, I want to mix dancing, I want cocktail hour to also be programmed and mixed. So it's 100% worth it to do ahead of time. And it's also a great selling point. I tell my couples, I'm like, listen, I'll just play a playlist. Like I'll actually make a custom mix for you for your cocktail hour and I'll send it to them if they want it you know they can listen to it in their house or whatever like I'll send them the mp3 you know it's no big deal but like it's gonna be mixed it, I'm DJing this whole time you hired me to DJ I'm DJing this whole time Spotify is not DJing for me virtual DJ is not DJing for me for sure seriously that, that's I'm a firm believer in that and I think it makes a difference but let's get into these lists shall we so I organize my cocktail hour list into six different categories right so I have six different cocktail hour lists or crates or whatever what I did was I kind of took the most common 
commonly asked for vibes for cocktail hour and I made really, really detailed lists for all those. And I also made two lists that kind of can work for everybody. So I meet with all my couples. When I sit down with them, I ask them about cocktail hour. What kind of vibe would you guys want? You know, I'll make you a custom mix. Like, you know, what, what do you want? Like, what are you thinking, right? Some couples have specific requests. They'll specifically request a certain genre. They might have like a theme going on. For theme stuff, I'm not really prepared. I kind of just case by case basis, I do my research and I make a sick mix for that. And it's fun, you know, you're just, you're learning about new music you might not know about, you know, or remembering stuff you forgot about and you put together a cool mix and then bam. But some couples really don't give a shit. They're like, do whatever for cocktail hour. And in those situations, I look at their guest list, right? Is it gonna be more family? Is it gonna be more friends? What kind of people are gonna be? I look at their request list for the reception. Do they like rock? Do they like classic stuff? Do they like newer stuff? Are, are they into a certain type of music? Is there stuff that they really don't want, right? And I analyze all that. And with that knowledge, I pull from the two favorite lists that I have as far as cocktail hour to make their mix. The two lists are modern and classics. That simple. Modern has more of a modern sound. It still can be a couple older songs, not too old, but maybe 20 years old in there, but everything has like more of a modern sound, modern flow, a lot of like, you know, newer radio hits too. You know, I got Maroon 5, Bruno Mars, all that stuff in there, but the deeper stuff, the stuff you don't play all the time, right? Classics is all genres, all eras, just, hits from whenever. Literally, I put a song for everyone in there, like something that like would work for anyone. Now it's tough to kind of come up with this stuff. I mean, what I did was I basically, I tried to think of like, for example, Steal My Sunshine by Len. You guys remember that song? I was lying on the grass on Sunday. Or do you remember the song Fastball um, uh, by, who the hell was it for by? I don't know, I'll put it on the screen because I forgot. These are songs that were hits back in the late 90s. More modern, like it's not an oldie song, right? You know, it sounds like more modern. It was played on the radio every five seconds. It was played on VH1 every five seconds, but we forgot about it. We don't play that stuff anymore. I think it's super important to have this stuff because you're never gonna step on your sets for later in the night, you know, but you're still keeping people engaged, keeping people vibing. I mean, I don't know about you, but like if someone plays a song that I used to listen to on VH1 as a kid, like all the time, and I haven't heard it in a while, I'm like, oh shit, I forgot about this, you know? And you're just feeling good. You don't have to play mainstream bangers to get people to feel good during cocktail hour. You don't. So those are my first two crates. The next crate is my Rat Pack and Oldies crate. If I get a certain request for cocktail hour, it's typically from this crate. A lot of people, I'm sure all over, want that snap your finger type Rat Pack feel, right? So what I did for this list is I eliminated all the bangers, right? I don't have Summer Wind by Frank Sinatra in there. I don't have That's Amore by Dean Martin in there. I wanna play that later during dinner. I dug deeper. You'd be surprised at how many hits these people have. It's unreal from back in like the 60s, mostly 60s, some late 50s in there. So I dug for all that and I tried to stick to that so it's the same vibe, but I still get to play some of the real goodies later during dinner. And you know, even during dancing, you know, if you do like a New York, New York thing, you know, if you're from my area, we do that sort of thing. New York, New York, you play New York, New York by Frank Sinatra and the New York area, you know what's gonna fucking happen? You know what's gonna fucking happen? People gonna go crazy. People gonna go crazy. They're gonna kick the legs. They're gonna kick the legs. My next list is acoustic. Another super commonly requested one. Great vibe, right? You know, you want that John Mayer-ish, you know, kind of get you in your feelings type music during cocktail hour. I dug deep with this one as well. Tried not to do any hits. More underground stuff, couple cool covers, you know, so acoustic covers of other songs. Things you forgot about. What about that one song? Don't worry. Be happy, right? Like stuff like that, you forgot about that stuff. You know what I mean? Like things like that, it's kind of in there. My acoustic list is probably the slowest list I have as far as like tempo. I mean, I tried to keep it upbeat. Some songs are a little slower, but they're just like so good, I kind of had to put them in there. But for the most part, upbeat, you know, more like driving your car down the highway on a beautiful day kind of playlist. Now I did make a jazz list as well. I think everybody should have one. It's rare I get it requested. I, even when it's requested, I'm kind of like, Ugh, you sure you just don't want to do Rat Pack? It's close, you know? Cause like jazz is just, uh, I mean, I love jazz music. I play jazz while I'm editing video, while I'm working on a project or while I'm just chilling in my house, reading something. Like I love jazz, don't get me wrong, but it's just sleepy. It's just tough to play during cocktail hour anymore. You know, it's just, I feel like we outgrew it as a people. 
You know, it used to be the standard, now it's like we all outgrew it. So I try and avoid it. With that being said, my jazz list, it's like 10, 15 songs or something like that, because like a lot of jazz songs are 10 minutes long, so like you don't need that many. I try to keep it upbeat, but you know, there's lulls in the songs and stuff like that too, so I don't know. I did my best there, but you gotta have a jazz list. You know, you're gonna have to, if you don't have it now, someone's gonna request and you gotta have to make it. So you might as well make it now, now you got it. And my final list is lounge music. Now lounge music to me is like deep house, like super modern, contemporary, it could be like like Odessa or like Kygo or like you know what I mean like like it's it's a produced like electronica type of music but down tempo. I'm from like the Philly area, like New Jersey, so like K Tronada is huge around here. Like that's like a, I guess it's kind of a Philly sound, but I have stuff from there and there, you know. A lot of the songs on that list you probably might not know, but I just kind of picked songs based on vibe and just to kind of have that. When you have like a really contemporary couple, weddings I do in the city, right? If I do a wedding in like Philly, New York, a lot of times they request stuff like this. You just want like that, that kind of shopping at Louis Vuitton type high end store vibe. That's it people, those are my six lists for cocktail hour. Some things I missed, like I don't have a country list because I don't do a lot of country weddings, so I don't have a need for it. If you're in the market where you do a lot of country weddings, make a banger country list. Same thing, include the country songs that you, you know, you're not gonna play later, but they're still bangers, they're still feel good stuff, you sing along. And I'm sure there's a ton of other genres, you know, obviously that I don't have, but I based my list on my market, the common weddings I usually do, and kind of how all that stuff works. And I think you should do the same. Now, if you want to see what's in my cocktail hour crates or any of my crates, I do have a link in the description. Click on that link and I have all my crates listed there. You can use that as kind of like a base and build upon that if you're stuck on a certain genre or whatever. And as always, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments or concerns or whatever, leave it in the comment section below. I'll get right back to you and I'll see you guys next video.